All right, this is for all you people that want to see it run. I got the bike out. Nothing has been adjusted. I want to show you what happens. Now what you need to do is remember there's air bubbles in the head right now. The radiator is trying to sort it out. What the radiator will do is it will blow. I filled this up with um, antifreeze. It will blow bubbles in here. You can see the bubbles, I think. Okay, what it's doing is it's getting the air out of the system. But this overflow bottle needs to be immersed so no air gets in this line. Now, we look at our temperature gauge, which I just hooked up for various reasons. And like I said before, a water-cooled racing engine should run about 180 degrees at idle. Now remember, this engine has not been run in a year. I have raised the compression. I've done a lot of work to it. Nothing has been adjusted. This is what a master engine looks like. You want to hear it run? I'll show it, I'll show it to you. As far as the racing throttle, everything else, I'm so glad that this throttle works. Now while I, while I stop on this throttle, I want to um, point at the gauge here and show you. So that's solid horsepower. Okay? Now, as you can see, we're still having bubbles and it's uh, blowing um, the air out of the system. That's normal. Air usually gets trapped in the top part right here, which causes a lot of heat. But as you can see, the temperature has gone back down to about 180, that's about right. I would suggest if you do have a water-cooled engine, that you have one of these somewhere. You can buy them for $15. This is made by West Tac, but you really need it because if something blows up your water quits or you blow a, a, a bearing, okay, your engine's gonna go to 400 degrees real quick. And uh, your engine will not last five minutes past 450 degrees. It just won't, it'll seize on you. Okay, let's see how the throttle works. That is one fucking beautiful throttle. Look at that, all that chrome right there. Once I get my uh, handle on it, the brakes work, the, um, the, the back uh, um, light, not light, mirror is all there. You need mirrors on these things. Everything fits. I got to hook the turn signals up. The uh, 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 buffer has been rebuilt. some of the carbon out oh well it just quit that's all right that's all right it started now what will happen is as soon as the engine starts to cool off that you can you see this this is what happens I want to show everybody the engine starts to cool off the vacuum in the system wants to refill the um, radiator with this fluid and I'll probably have to put a lot more in here because this bottle shouldn't be this low and this line should not be that long. But you can see that the cylinder head temp is slowly going down. And this uh, process will happen four, five, six times while you ride the bike. It's, all it is is getting the air out. It blows the air out, it gets a new, new, um, new, damn it. Um, man, this is a great video to explain how this works. And now all I have to do is connect my little turn switch right down in here, get it all set up with the proper wiring, and then tuck the wiring back in here, put everything back together, check for leaks. Like right here, this was a problem. What you want to do is run your hands all along the uh, areas, which could be a leak. Okay, if you come away with wet fingers or something like that, you got a problem because it's only going to get worse. But you want to hear it run? That was just a rough, a very rough, untuned engine. But that's the way I build them. I'm going to tear up the track with this bitch.
she runs at about 17 to 1 compression and she's running 120 octane VP race fuel.